I process all my underwater images to emphasize the story I want to tell, so I thought it might be useful to very quickly take you through a typical workup. And I've chosen this image, uh, there's the original of it, um, and we're eventually going to end up with this. And it's an image I took in Mexico, it's the cormorants diving through the huge sardine shoals. Now before we start on the processing, let me say right from the start, you need to be super careful when you process a nature image if you want to enter a competition with it. Some competitions are incredibly strict to the amount of alterations they will allow you to make and certainly some wouldn't allow me to make the, the, the level of alteration I'm going to make, you're going to see me make here. At one end of the scale are competitions run by the PAGB where there's a, quite a lot of leeway as to what you can take out and, and move around. But at the other end you can't do anything at all. Be really careful because if you do enter a competition and you win an award, it's quite often they'll ask you to see the original raw image to see exactly what you have or haven't done. And it would be a tragedy to be caught out just by have, just because you know, you've not looked at the rules. So let's start. There's the original and the first very biggest processing step really is cropping. Because this sun ball here, the sun is obviously everything in this image. These wonderful rays of light coming through the water. But it's just far too big here, it's far too distracting, it's drawing your eye straight up and out of the image. So you'll see that the first thing I've done is I've cropped it. I want to leave some of it in, but not, not so much that it draws your eye straight out of the image. So here's the Photoshop layer stack then. If we alt click on the bottom layer, it switches them all off. And now I'm going to step up the images, uh, step up the layers one at a time and just tell you why I'm doing something. So the first thing is, look, we've got some distractions that's pulling your eye away um, that, that it just have got no part in the image at all. So I clone them out. It's really easy to clone, certainly in underwater images, because there's, you know, it's a very soft uh, feel to most of the images anyway. So it's really easy to clone things out. Then I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer. If you look down at the bottom where it's dark and the top where it's light, you might just see a difference when I click it on and off. And my processing is all about increasing contrast. I would say that is the thing I do most of all. Um, at, 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 the high, at the wide level using the curves adjustment layer, at the micro detail level using dodging and burning. But it's all about increasing contrast, the difference between the lightest and the darkest part of any particular part of the image. Because that's what, in my opinion, gives, it, gives an image punch, it gives it impact. So I've done a general curves adjustment layer, off, on, to increase a bit of punch. And then I, the C is just a bit too wishy-washy colour for me. So using a selective colour adjustment layer, I've darkened the C look. I hope you can see some of these things. It, it, it's quite subtle, because it has to be subtle, of course. Um, if it wasn't subtle, it would just stand out like a sore thumb. But what I've done there is I've just made the C a little bit darker, a little bit bluer. Now, wonderful adjustment layer for underwater images, certainly. The clarity adjustment layer. And if you look, maybe look at the highlights on these sardines, if I switch it off and switch it on. Uh, again, it's, it's an overall uh, contrast adjustment layer, but it's a wonderful one. If you don't use Photoshop, you can find it in uh, Camera Raw, and you can also find it in Lightroom. Now we start with dodging and burning. And what I've done, look, if you look, look at the cormorants, I've lightened them up a little bit. I want them just to stand out a little bit from the background. I'll also have done some work on the rocks here. I spend a lot of time dodging and burning. Contrast adjustment again. But in this case, it's micro contrast adjustment. A bit more tidying up. So look here at the back of the cormorant. There's something there which is probably the side of a fish, but it's had to go. Um, anything, I keep looking at it, anything that I think is distracting, I want to take it out, providing it's minor, of course. Now, I do use this, one of my favourite adjustment layers, you'll find it in um, the Nick collection, Dark and Light and Centre. It's effectively putting a vignette on, um, and I love vignettes, basically, to draw your eye into the centre of the image and away from the edges. Clearly there's an exception in this image because you've got this massively bright area. But if you look, look on, off. It's a wonderful little tool. It's, it's a sophisticated vignette tool, really. Give it a go if you've never used it. A bit more tidying up. So look at the head of the cormorant there, look. Can you see? There's a white spot. There's a white spot on this rock. 
And what I do is actually I squint my eyes. So look at the image and squint your eyes so they only just open. And you'll find anything that's bright will stick out. And if it's sticking out and it, you don't want it to, it's got to go. Um, so a bit more tidying up at the top. I don't quite know. I don't even know if we'll see it. Oh, look over here, look. So, you know, I'm all the while looking around, a bit, bit here as well in the middle, looking around at things. I'm trying to simplify the image down to the core elements to tell the story I want to tell. And the story I want to tell here is this wonderful, I think, ethereal feel to this image with the sun rays coming through and these cormorants diving down through these millions and millions of sardines. There we go. Thank you very much.